When his protective clothing was scratched, the doctor pulled out the oxygen tubing and sterilized it immediately. Unfortunately, it was too late. The virus had already infected his body. In less than 10 minutes, he suddenly felt weak and then fell down and started to convulse. Colleagues immediately resuscitated him. His body temperature had risen to 43 degrees. He might die of shock at any time. Colleagues filled his body with ice to cool him down, patted his face, and then injected him with medication. But he suddenly had a violent convulsion, which caused the needle to hit the hand of one of his colleagues. Robbie immediately disinfected it with iodine. Unfortunately, she's also infected. If they don't develop an antivirus serum, they'll both be dead within 24 hours. What's even more frightening is that they're not the only ones infected. More than 2,000 people in this town have been infected by the virus. At this time, the military has taken over the management of the town. All residents must stay home. Whenever they felt sick, they hung a white towel outside their homes. Soon the whole town was covered with white towels. Positively infected people were transferred to a centralized quarantine site set up by the government. A few young men wanted to get out of this viral hell, so they drove out of town to prevent the outbreak from spreading. The army shot up their cars. In the end, they were blown up along with their cars. Others who wanted to leave were forced to comply, but the military is losing control of the virus. The infected were dying in droves. They had to throw the bodies into an abandoned cabin and burn it down. The general, realizing the situation was getting out of control, made a bold decision. He decided to use nuclear weapons to destroy the entire town. That way, the virus could be eliminated. So he falsely claimed that the situation in the town was out of control. If we don't use extreme measures immediately, the whole country will be affected in less than two days. So the president immediately ordered the town to be cleansed. There was still hope of finding the antibody, but the general wanted to destroy the town as soon as possible in order to cover up the secret. It turns out that this terrible virus is a biochemical weapon that the military is secretly developing. 20 years ago, the U.S. Army was developing a biochemical weapon in a remote village in Africa but accidentally leaked the virus. As a result, a large number of soldiers died in a horrific manner. The military doctors were at their wit's end, so they turned to the U.S. government for help. The researchers arrived, took a small blood sample and left. Not long after, the soldiers saw an airplane and cheered thinking it was dropping medical supplies. Instead, it dropped countless incendiary bombs. With a few loud bands, the entire village was flattened. The general thought the virus had been destroyed, but the virus had already infected the monkeys in the forest. It had mutated over 20 years and was now airborne. Soon after, there was another outbreak in another town in Africa. As head of the Infectious Disease Research Center, Sam led the way to the village. Here, the corpses were all cauterized and bleeding from every part of their bodies. After collecting samples, Sam felt the situation was serious enough to break into General Billy's party to report the situation. He asked for a nationwide alert, but he made up some excuse to get rid of Sam. Then General Billy secretly took a sample of the virus and compared it to the previous one. He found that the two viruses were almost identical. It turned out that General Billy was also involved in the operation 20 years ago. He was afraid that Sam would find out the secret, so he transferred Sam away from his post. This is a critical time. Sam's team analyzed the virus and found out that it had an incredible ability to spread. It takes only one day to kill all mole cells in the body. It's worse than Ebola. He wants his ex-wife Robbie, who works at the CDC, to warn all the medical staff. Robbie went to the director right away, but the director didn't take it seriously. Something terrible happened. Robbie received reports of two unknown cases. She took one look at the test charts and realized it was the virus Sam was talking about. She rushed to the hospital, only to find a dying man in a hospital bed. He stammered, monkey. Turns out he's a worker at the animal quarantine center. He stole a white-faced monkey and got spit on by the monkey, but he didn't take it seriously. When he got to the pet store, the owner didn't buy it because the monkey he brought was a female and the owner wanted a male. As the owner was looking at the monkey, the monkey suddenly scratched the owner. Now the monkey was unsellable. He released the monkey back into the wild. Then he got on a plane to find his girlfriend. Although he started to feel sick on the plane, he was dizzy and his eyes were swollen, but he just thought he had a cold. When he got off the plane, he found his girlfriend. They hugged each other because they hadn't seen each other for a long time, and the virus was passed on to her. Robbie saw that his girlfriend didn't know anything, so she dissected his body, hoping to find the cause, but the autopsy shot her. She had to send a blood sample for testing before informing Sam. The doctor who did the test didn't realize the seriousness of the situation and was listening to a song while he worked. He accidentally broke a test tube and caught blood sprayed all over his face. But he just washed it off with boiling water and dried it off quickly. He even went to the movies with his girlfriend after work. It's too dangerous to be in a confined space with a crowd of people 
Soon he felt sick, turned pale and coughed. A large amount of invisible droplets were sprayed around the room, spreading the virus to the other people watching the movie. He doesn't realize he's going to kill the whole town. He just had a dry throat and wanted to go out and get a bottle of water. He coughed and walked to the front of the theater, and the virus spread to everyone in the room. He didn't even have time to say a few words when he got to the front desk. He suddenly fainted and started having violent convulsions. What's worse, the doctor on duty thought it was just the flu because he hadn't seen anything like it before. It wasn't long before the hospital was flooded with patients. They all had the same symptoms as this man and had been to the movies. The hospital was in chaos. There were not enough beds, not enough staff. Even medical supplies were in short supply. No one was wearing a mask. Realizing something was wrong, the doctor searched for information. But in the end, he couldn't find any similar cases. He had to report the situation to the government health department for help. General Billy wasn't willing to help because they didn't want to jeopardize the situation. He ordered Sam to stay out of it. But Sam won't listen to him. Instead, he hijacks a helicopter and heads for the town. General Billy had to bring out the serum he developed. As soon as Sam saw the serum, he was furious because it showed that the military had known about the virus for a long time and hadn't helped. And now there are so many casualties. And then he realized that the infected people were infected with two different viruses. But they were similar, possibly variants of one virus. The serum provided by General Billy only cured the original virus, not the mutated one. Luckily, his colleague discovered a key piece of information. The original dead man was in contact with a monkey. This monkey was the first to be infected with the virus, so it may contain antibodies. But the general decided to use nuclear weapons to destroy the entire town. Sam didn't have much time to develop the antibody. He immediately hijacked another helicopter. Now he must find the monkey that was released by the staff. He goes to the staffer's dormitory and finds a picture of the monkey on his bed. Then he breaks into the TV station and pulls out the photo of the monkey on the air. He hoped that the residents would give him some useful information. It worked like a charm. A mother said her daughter had been in contact with the monkey in the photo. Sam came here in a flash. With the little girl's help, the monkey slowly emerged from the forest. The soldiers who were hiding quickly shot the monkey with a tranquilizer gun and captured it. Sam immediately reported it to his superiors, only to be told that the general had issued a warrant for his capture, and three fighter jets have been dispatched to capture him, which means Sam's gonna have a tough time getting back to town. It's a victimization of his own people. Sam, angry, hands up his comms. They hadn't been flying for long when they were confronted by the officers who had come to arrest them. Luckily, Salk's flying skills soon lost them. They returned to the town without incident. With the monkey's antibodies, the serum was quickly developed. Sam gave it to Robbie first to see how it worked. It didn't take long for her health to improve, but the general still hasn't given up on destroying the town. Even with the serum, the nuclear warplanes are on their way to the town. Sam had to fly on the same route as the jets and shout to the pilots that the virus in the town can be contained and won't spread. The pilots understand Sam and they don't want to destroy their own people. But that pilots, as soldiers, had to follow the general's orders and keep dropping weapons. It's in a soldier's nature to obey. Sam also does not give up. At the last moment when the two helicopters collided, the military fighters avoided the collision and deliberately dropped their weapons into the sea. The residents of the town survived, and the general's secret was revealed to the public. He was destined to pay for his actions, but there were those who didn't comply.